of stock exchange this Monday morning. Now this, most of the economic news lately been lousy. Weak employment numbers, GDP growth are barely more than 1%. A report last week showing manufacturing is in contraction. Are we headed for another recession or are we maybe already in one? Joining us now is Peter Schiff from Euro Pacific Capital. A lot of talk this morning, Peter, that we are going to be in recession in the year 2013, regardless of who wins the election. That's pretty much the backdrop to the market action today. What do you say? Well, first of all, Stuart, I think we're in a recession right now. Look at the, the, the second quarter revised GDP numbers from last week. The government claims that the economy is growing at 1.3%, but they also claim that inflation is annualizing out at 1.6%. If inflation is actually 3% right now and not 1.6%, the economy is already contracting. And you're talking about the Dow Jones this morning being up. In terms of gold today, it's actually down. In fact, the Dow is now worth less than 7.8 ounces of gold. That's down more than 80% since the bear market began 12 years ago. So the, it's not that the stock market is going up. It's not. The value of our money is going down. That's interesting, Peter. Uh, let me return to the original question, though. Okay, you say if, if we are in a recession already. Then in 2013, yes. does it get much worse? I'm looking for a time frame on the real spiral down here. Well, it's going to get worse. It's going to get a lot worse when interest rates finally respond to all this inflation by rising, and then we go over the real fiscal but cliff. Hold on a second, because Peter. Because when interest me, rates let, go me, up, the party's over. I hate to interrupt you, Peter. I'm sorry about this. But look, you, you say the party's over when interest rates start to rise. Doesn't the Fed just print a lot more money to keep those interest rates down on Treasury securities? Well, and it might, well, it the might reason interest rates are going to rise is because of all the money the Fed is printing. You see, when the Fed prints money, it actually makes bonds less attractive, not more attractive, because it debases the currency in which they're denominated. Sure. In the short run, yes, it helps the bond market, but only if you're smart enough to sell. It's the people who are bailing out of bonds and selling to the Fed that benefit from QE. Anybody who's holding bonds is going to be left holding the bag. A little later on this program, I'm going to do an editorial saying that we are in another bubble. And that bubble is America's debt, Treasury securities. And that sooner or later that bubble will burst. I'm basically agreeing with you, Peter. I don't know about the time frame, but I'm basically agreeing with you. Uh, are you in agreement with me that with this is a bubble in Treasuries? Oh, of course it's a bubble. It's the biggest bubble. And it's not just treasuries. It's actually a bubble in government. Government is enormous because it can borrow all this money so cheap. So you have a government bubble and it's reflected in the bond market and in the dollar. So it's the dollar that's a bubble along with treasuries and it's all going to burst. And this whole phony economy that is built on consumption financed spending, both in the private sector and through the government, is going to come crashing down. It's a bigger house of cards now than the one we erected uh, prior to the financial crisis. There's no way out, is there? I mean, I, look, I don't know how this thing ends. I don't know what bursts the bubble. I don't know. I'm not smart enough to know that. But you're basically saying there is no way out. This is well, a bubble. There's no it's easy burst. way out. No, there's, no. There's going to be a lot no of pain easy no matter out. what. There's, right? there's a, there's, there, yeah, there's the correct way out, and then there's what we're doing. We're trying to inflate, inflate our way out of it, and we're going to inflate our way into something worse. What we need to do, do is admit as a nation that we're insolvent. We need to restructure our debts. We need to dramatically shrink government spending, reform the tax code, and allow the market to repair the damage that the government has inflicted on the economy. Well, we, have, we have misallocations of resources. We don't have enough savings. We don't have enough production. We have too much speculation. All of that is because the Fed keeps force-feeding cheap money into the economy because it thinks <laughs> it's going to create jobs. I, it's not going to create anything but disaster. I'm with you, Peter. The difference between us, and we've had this argument before, is that no politician can get elected to, to dog catcher if they want to get the, take the pain immediately. I know we've had this argument before. No politician can get elected doing that. Oh, we're out of time, Peter, so you don't get your 10 cents worth, okay? <laughs> but come back. We'll All have right. the argument again. I promise you, Peter Schiff. Good luck.